Hello, hello, everybody. Howdy. So we tried the Dr. Pepper now iced, yes. right? So we like we boiled it, lemoned it, and put it on ice. <laughs> lemoned it. Lemoned it. <laughs> I like that. That's an adjective. <laughs> you got to lemon it. <laughs> Just throw a lemon at <laughs> it. <laughs> lemon. <laughs> Get lemoned, idiot. You know that. Uh, how was the phrasing in Portal Two? Like when life gives you when lemons. life gives you lemons, <laughs> you make a fucking. Yeah, the lemons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Glados going like, like getting all hyped up with Cave Johnson shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's good. It's good. Damn, I haven't played that game in a long time. Right. Uh, this is amazing. It it has no right to be. Like, first of all, how dare it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Darian mentioned it just a minute ago, where it's like when you when soda gets flat, it's kind of grody, right? Like it's fine, but it's kind of grody. Mm-hmm. But this, <laughs> however, <laughs> you see, it's smooth. It ta- it's smooth and tasty still. It's weird, <sighs> refreshing. Even this is the summertime drink. This is the this is like the pivotal moment. We had life pre-boiled Dr Pepper. <laughs> We're in post-boiled Dr Pepper life right now. It's. It's amazing. Aren't, we're here. <laughs> Guys, you gotta get here with us. You, Please. <laughs> I need society to catch up with me. <laughs> <laughs> He's so tired of being so far ahead of everybody else. He needs companionship, guys. Society needs to start boiling. <laughs> I need this to be served at Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the pink drink. We get boiled Dr. Pepper. <laughs> I think I said it earlier. It's like they we need to call it like pepper tea. Pepper tea, yeah. Yeah. That's a good name. It's good. I'm I'm astounded. Also. <gasps> hello, hello everyone. <laughs> and welcome back to the Full Dark No Stars Riverdale podcast. Today, we partook in season 2, episode 19. 19. 19. 19. Mm-hmm. Wow, there was just shit flying we in this we episode. go dude like, we go what we have cheryl taking down the mayor writing a hit piece on him the the, sh- Kevin the sheriff getting, the sheriff yeah. not the mayor right right it's they're di- almost the same thing it's a little different or, yeah, yeah the sheriff <laughs> kevin's upset because the sheriff's his daddy we have archie getting kidnapped by nick st Clair, beaten half to death and nick is like Hey, Betty, if you have sex with me, I'll release your Ron- boyfriend. Ronnie. Yeah. Not Betty. We're getting to Betty. <laughs> hey, you know what? And then we have the A plot of the episode, which is Betty being the hardest ass bitch. It's kind of in it's, the show. We, we we really just went the fuck off in this episode. I, I love this episode. It was Mi- so good. I'm I'm Sad. I'm genuinely sad Midge died. Uh, yeah, the last episode, like uh, the musical thing, opened up the curtains and it's like Midge, Midge is fucking dead. stabbed and to the wall. And this episode just like opens on her funeral. Incredible, bold, even right. It's beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. And yeah, so now Cheryl's like Cheryl has her own red circle now. Yeah, who's that like we're gonna catch the red hood. Yeah, so fuck you, Sheriff Carol Keller. Mm-hmm. And so he's having troubles. Oh, man. There's so much. And, and I, then there's the Betty plot. Yeah, it's So true. much happened there's in so the Betty happen. plot this episode. We found out Chick, not the real brother. No. And which we, we all knew. We, yeah, yeah. But, uh, well, not just that, but we all knew that FP was, was the, ostensibly was the, the father, right? Dad, yeah. But we found out, oh, Chick killed Betty's real brother. Allegedly. Allegedly. He kind of confused to it. He, he confessed. He said, I couldn't stop myself. Yes, but he did simply say, like, I lost control. I didn't mean to hurt him, which in Riverdale land makes me go, the real brother is still alive and will show up later. And will show up later. <laughs> the real brother is the Red Hood. Ooh, the, not the Red Hood, the Black the, the, Hood. Yeah, yeah, the Black Hood. He's yeah, not Jason yeah. Todd. He, Jason no, Todd's no, not here. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but Black Hood's back. Good old BH, right? I old BH. I love that they brought back the ringtone when when that the lollipop uh, song started playing. I was just like, you were just yes, like, hmm, yes, yes. <laughs> this is it. 
Because that's such a good motif because you know. Yeah, I, and, I love it. And Betty knew, which is like mm. s- seeing the emotion break on her face when she answered. So good, dude. So good. She got that pen ready to write down notes. So I'm just like, we're back we're in back. it, boys. <laughs> oh, this was such a good episode. I yes, oh my every step of the way. God. I love when Chick went berserk and cut Alice. That's true. And he just had Jughead punch him. <laughs> Betty pulling out the gun the rolling, later at the episode. Yeah. Just oh, she still has it. She still has the gun, and she still's got that attitude. That's pseudo speech she gave when she got chick out in the middle like it went to the yeah. graveyard just like we're just here to meet someone yeah black hood shows it's up like your very own angel of death Ooh, Betty. i love when she's just like if you run now i bet you have a 70 percent chance of making out of this alive oh my god chick just stands there bewildered 60 <laughs> percent like <laughs> <ooh>. <laughs> See what I needed is is when Chick was looking at her and then turns around, sees the black hood, we turn back around, and it's a dark Betty with the wig on. <laughs> that would have been that, the best. That I that, that is what was missing. Yeah. However, still a great scene. It's so good. Absolutely it's fantastic. So good. I'm I'm super happy about it. Oh guys, good this shit. show keeps <laughs> delivering. It has no right. Absolutely no right. <laughs> Please go watch it. <laughs> Sometimes you need a schlocky mess, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like people have their trash TV. Like yeah, for you yeah. know, Meg likes to watch Jersey Shore for <laughs> to just put it on and watch people like wreck their own lives. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just it's it's she's got good taste otherwise, but it's just like sometimes you put on just you know trash. there were there were a handful of years in my life where I would just put on Ghost Adventures. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> That's such a weird pull for you. Like it feels what do you like mean? it just feels weird. You get to see a bunch of like weird pseudo hunky men get <laughs> scared shitless doing ghost adventures. These are our ghost adventures. <laughs> <laughs> and it was always, it would always like be really funny to me how the main guy had like a dust allergy so when he had to go to explore some places he needed the mask and glasses because like he couldn't use his regular contacts and just looked so nerdy and you know kind of cute <laughs> you were like, <laughs> you're like he looks so nerdy and it made me so hard <laughs> i mean like he I, do be kind of hunky i wanted to pin him to the ground you see <laughs> 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 a little bit. Oh. But like, Should that's... we watch Ghost Adventures? No. Josh, no. you need to put on Ghost Adventures while you're in while you're in like a VC. Oh my god. <laughs> Just watch Ghost Adventures with the Discord. No. Come on guys, join no, the Discord. We're not, we're not gonna and we can watch, watch Ghost, Ghost Adventures, Adventures with we're Josh. Gonna, no. Yes. No. <laughs> oh, that'd be so good. Terrible. Terrible, but I look for what this because this season's that almost over, isn't it? Because this is episode nineteen. This is episode I'm nineteen. Sure this is only like a twenty-five episode season. Yeah, we're we're most of the way through it. We still have a bit left. Right. Uh, we're not gonna we're not coming up to the end very fast. Right. Right. And we get like a hint at the very end of the episode of who might be the Black Hood. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because of the questions that Betty asks. Mm-hmm. So she's just like, "Where's Dad?" And Alice is like, oh, he's out looking for you. And you have the dramatic music, and it's like, oh, he doesn't have an alibi for like when. Where, for, where was when, he when the Black when Hood he was, was out? Uh, yeah, when she was with the Black Hood. Man, I mean, I guess I haven't really noticed. Does Hal have green eyes? Oh, I'm not looking. Is at he Hal. is he wearing contacts? Maybe. And and also, we have not seen. Hal interact with Archie since. That's true. So it's he's been a never while. looked in his eyes. Yeah. Oh. Oh my God. <laughs> Is it Hal? Yeah. Is it Hal? <laughs> very hey, good. Yo. Very good. I mean, he was like out for the like the entire season. Yeah. So like, you know, they had to write out. They had to write out both Hal and the Black Hood because he was off doing something. Right. Right. You know. <laughs> So we couldn't have either. We couldn't get a kind of like stocky white man, old white man, for some reason to play the Black Hood while the actor was out doing whatever. 
It's fine. It's, it's fine. It's fine. But what are we doing? We are. This is a cave mouth. <laughs> it goes wah. Is that what we're calling that? It's, it, it's, is it not? Is it not the mouth of a cave? <coughs> a cave? You know what I want to call this? What's that? The bear hole. <laughs> I can't even like say that you're wrong either. Because like Brian comes it's here. Brian's it's hole. Brian's It's Brian's, Brian's bear hole. <laughs> Guys, do We've you unlocked want... the full name of the bar. <laughs> do you want to explore Brian's bear hole? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, you can explore the bear hole more than enough for everybody. Lit. You you, you have at Brian's bear hole. <laughs> Go for it. Yes. What are we doing here? Yeah, you know we don't know. That's true. We did. Brian get, just like he said. We're going for us here. We're going for a little drive. Yeah, yeah. He said, "Um, Puentes, we're going for a little drive." <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Being knocked out, regaining consciousness, stumbling his way through the dark, all while on an untold amount of shrooms is uh, harrowing. Harrowing. Harrowing? Harrowing. Harrowing. That's fine. Uh, yeah, harrowing. 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 Harrow. Har- think, think arrow. Like arrow with like. an H. Yeah, exactly. Harrowing. Uh, this world is more dreamlike than his dreams. And this combination of disorienting factors leaves Cameron fumbling through a series of events immediately after he'd reached the old bear. Brian grabbed his paw, and suddenly they were moving swiftly through the desert before Cameron is pulled into a place that's cold and dark, lit up dimly by an old electric lantern. Excuse me. Uh, it's handles hanging from a barrel of Brian's shotgun. Nice. That's cool. Uh, if Cameron thought his perspective, perception, perception, that's a perception. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> perception of time was fucked on weed. Now it's twisted over on itself. He's exhausted, having not eaten a proper meal in well over a day. Those beef jerky and crackers just weren't good enough. Not really. Uh, and his throat is so dry, he thinks he might be willing to drink Brian's drugged water. Each time Brian goes around a bend first, or his uh, bulk obscures it, the lantern's light disappears, and Cameron's uh, well, and leaves Cameron in darkness. Each time that happens, a brilliant red arches uh, crowd his vision. Oh, we fade. <gasps> oh, we're in the cave. Cool. We in it. Who's in darkness? <laughs> Who's in darkness? <laughs> Now, this is the name of a Kingdom Hearts character. Who's? <laughs> Who's in darkness. <laughs> full name. Yeah, that's his full name. Full Christian name. <laughs> Please. My father was Mr. Darkness. Call me Who's in. I hope it's, um... <laughs> Diz's apprentice. Yeah. Like di- another yeah. apprentice of Diz. Diz. <laughs> well, I mean, could you consider Riku Diz's apprentice? Because Diz and Ansem the Wise are two different characters. <laughs> They're the same. They're person. two different characters. <laughs> no, no. See, here, here's what's up, right? So, uh, they're both the same character because they're equally racist. Oh, true. And um, he does do blackface when he's wrapped in the bandages. He is, he does do blackface. It's pretty unfortunate. <laughs> and yeah. he he does say it instead of she. That's true. Referring, referring to, to she on. Uh, no one. You know. <laughs> She's allowed to be a character. She, ex- as of three, she exists. Her name is literally no one. I kind of hate it. It's <laughs> some people. Are like, Isn't it um, so it's, good? It's number I, and I'm like, no, no. Look at it. You're clearly supposed to pronounce it's it as no, no one. one. <laughs> it's so good. It's the worst. Namura I really thought it. he was cooking with that <laughs> one. He thought he was cooking. Okay, bro. but it is the most he ever cooked in the franchise. <laughs> Like like days actually like unironically. It's it's the most cooked installment. Unfortunately, it is 
arguably the worst installment in terms of everything that matters, which yeah. is how you interact with it. Yeah. Uh, gameplay. Because <laughs> gameplay bad. Watching the movie, barely tolerable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Granted, it was not nearly as bad as when we watched Coded. Oh, no, that was I fun. wanted to kill myself. <laughs> it was lit. Oh, look how ruddy he is. Oh, yeah, he got yeah, fucked up. He's, he's a cute little boy. Uh, I am. I'm in the darkness. <laughs> Everything is in darkness. No, just me. Stop fighting it. It'll only make it worse. Cameron is surprised by the bear's sudden appearance. Where am I? Brian sighs heavily again. Doesn't matter. But... Cameron crumples up as something jabs him hard in the sternum, twisting in on himself, feeling a black hole open in his chest. It sucks the rest of his body and attention into it as the canine curls up on the hard dirt floor, whining and grunting. Finally, air returns to his lungs, and as it does, his he hears a snorting sound again. After a while, Cameron looks up from his position on the ground to see Brian on his knees, appearing to smell the stock of his shotgun. And then Cameron notices the white powder, and he understands what's happening. Cameron hears a, a familiar voice, one that he's sure he's heard and not imagining. Mm -hmm. Oh. Dylan. Dylan. <laughs> Dylan. Okay. <clears throat> Don't snort it. You're trying to coat your uh, nasal nasal cavity, not your fucking lungs. That's how my friends did it. Then your friends are fucking idiots. Brian looks up from his disappear from his disappearing line of bath salts. Who are you talking to? Cameron quickly tries to hush Dylan, and Brian already heard him. On top of that, Brian doesn't seem angry or upset, but his continued stare demands an answer. Um, his, his name is... Uh, I should probably just say Dylan. You really want to keep saying <laughs> Dylan, don't say you? Dylan. You want to say it so bad. <laughs> that's how it's spelled! I know, but you know that's not how the name is Dylan. said. <laughs> uh, name's Dylan. He's my ex. Uh, sorry, we don't get along well. You getting some third man syndrome? Whenever I get real fucked up on too many drugs for too long, a person always shows up. I end up having a conversation with them and everything. Brian readjusts to the way he's holding his lantern and gun and grabs Cameron's arm with the other. I hear it happens to people in survival situations too. Anyway, I'm always too delirious to remember who the third man is. Y yeah. Cameron can't understand how Dylan isn't real, uh, but this nightmare bear apparently is. Is he being tricked? Alright, here's the deal. I'll stop hitting you as long as you're smiling. Got it? Oh, Easy. That's pretty good. Easy. That was pretty good. Just Smile, Cammy boy. Huh? <laughs> Brian clenches his fists meaningfully. Cameron winces, then quickly stretches his mouth into a large smile, even though it hurts to the point that tears well up in his eyes. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't realize what you were talking about for a second. Uh, now I remember. Sure you do. Pathetic faggy. Brian continues to inspect Cameron as the coyote remains quiet, keeping a smile plastered on his face. Uh, this experience is too much. All of this is too much. He just wa wants to, to stop, and he'll do whatever the bear, this source of his torment, wants if it prevents him from being hurt again. Guess I did bust your chops pretty good, huh? Hmm. Cameron flinches as the bear grabs his badly aching muzzle in one giant paw. Wait, please don't. Cameron cringes hard, and he try, but he tries his best to hold still. Yeah, broke your tooth too. Swelling up a bit, but you're cuter with your face all messed up like that. <laughs> too bad it's gonna look real ugly by tomorrow morning. Not that it'll matter. It's just hard to look at you now. 
with that stupid scar. Brian lets go and grabs his shoulder instead, at the same time glancing at Cameron's shirt. You from Bridgetown? Timber City? Or did you just pick that up with a Goodwill? <laughs> I always say, when you're shopping at the Goodwill, never pick up clothes that have anything to do with the place. Fuck, just saw a few years back, I took a Weston sweatshirt from a Salvation Army and... Cameron follows along silently. Meanwhile, that third presence has shifted into someone else. There's something, oh, something else, something a bit more familiar. Brian's getting chatty again for the second dose he took. Anyway, I hear that city's overrun with Antifa and all that. A true liberal hellscape if there ever was one. His mother, following behind them, is holding his paw. Uh, looking back, he can't see her clearly, but he knows it's her. It's okay. Uh, a, lot of <clears throat> a lot of the time, it's outside groups coming into the city making trouble. He even sounds like her, defending the city they both grew up in despite its problems, despite its streets becoming a stage for the country's culture wars to physically play out. Even while they suffer on the outskirts of what was supposed to be a libera liber liberal bastion lit up by the lights of tolerance and welfare, but instead glowing orange from burning cars and flashbangs. And yet they defended it because they both believed in its core principles. Now though, Cameron looks behind himself while also looking back. He's taller than she is, and he's remem reminded of just how small she was, how small she'd seem to him now if she survived. He would have saved her too, if she could have, uh, have held on just a little longer. But how much longer? Four, five years? Could she have held on that long? No, not with her habit and the amount she was using. And though Cameron doesn't want to admit it, it was her death that spurred him to make the first serious change in his life. His mom wasn't a good mom. All things considered, she shouldn't have ever had children. But how could he judge? She was still a teenager, excited and in love, living out, uh, living out of a 70s Chevy van. But all of that came to an end when she, when he was born in December 1995. We are not the same age, Cameron. We are the same age as Cameron. <laughs> We're not the same age as Cameron. It's true, we are, though. <laughs> How does that make you feel? Uh, like I can top him. <laughs> hey, at least he's of age, so it's fine. <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, then his abusive, probably schizophrenic father left and committed suicide sometime in the mid-2000s. But for a few months in 1995, his parents truly wanted to make a good life for him, and that, feels from, and that feeling from that moment in time overwhelms Cameron. Uh, they wanted him to be happy, successful, and they truly thought he'd be the one to break the curse of poverty on both their families. And even though they wanted that for him, they especially wanted him to be happy, to have a family life and a childhood that both his parents were only able to see other kids enjoy from afar. They tried, but it's the most uh, typical love story from people like them. Because then, like in all the other stories, things break and then things settle. He'd done the exact same before uh, Devin. She showed uh, she should have taken more precautions. She left him along in the trailer alone, often. Uh, her medication and recreational drugs freely available for him to experiment with while she was at work. He became an addict just like her, and he had come to understand the baggage that comes with that label, that it's not just about a craving or a desire for something. Everyone has that. No, it's just about who you are as a person. A liar, a thief, a cheater. Someone willing to do anything to get whatever it is their addic addiction demands. Anything to feel good. Whether it's par par pathetically checking all of the coin dispenses in a casino once they've spent their life savings, or um, pathetically combing through the carpet for whatever drug is... <laughs> 
uh, it is that uh, the, you're starting to come down from. The only thing that saved him from that life and death was his grades. Somehow, through all of the substance abuse and neglect, he was a straight-A student, and that's what got him a partic partial? partial scholarship to the University of Pueblo. And that's what got him out of the trailer park surrounding Bridgetown and into the state's flagship university. A few schools in... Uh, yeah, a few schools in his own state had better offers, but Pueblo was the most prestigious of the schools he got accepted into. A top 100 school with the best ranked nursing and engineering programs in the region. That, and at the time, Cameron wanted to be far away from Bridgetown, even if that meant the desert. And then he met Devin. She wasn't a good mom. But she was a great person, a wonderful person, and she did the best she could with what she had at the time. And she brought him into a chaotic, unstable life, a life that she saved multiple times, and while he occasionally wished his mother, mother uh, would have just uh, let him die, now Cameron is only thankful. While most of his life was tough, the past five years have been better than he would have uh, ever dared to dream was possible. His life was perfect up until yesterday, when they got here. It's only been a fucking day. It's only <laughs> That's crazy, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's only been one day. It's only been a it's fucking only, you know, day. Only, sometimes you just need one bad day, right? That's really all it is. It's just <laughs> one bad fucking day. That's Cameron's insane. gonna become Jokerfied after this. Yeah. <laughs> Joker red pilled, Jokerfied. The whole the whole nine, the whole gambit, if you will. All you need is a smile, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess so, huh? <laughs> God damn. I think that's the line from, like, uh, Whatever Happened to the Cape Crusader. That's, like, a, a famous page from mm. that comic. Uh, one of the origins of the Jokers in that comic. It's pretty good. Okay. That's such a neat comic that, like, you can't show people. <laughs> <laughs> Feels like there's a lot of that in comics. It's like, you can't just show them. Well, it's... It's that book where, like, Batman dies. Okay. And the they have a public funeral for him in an abandoned factory. <laughs> Naturally. Right? As you do. And, like, a whole bunch of the villains show up and, like, all that. Uh, and it's, like, okay, it's a straightforward, like, premise or right. thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you see Joker walk in, but there's also, like, three other Jokers in the audience. <laughs> and you're, like... What? And there's like three Alfreds. Okay. There are multiple like versions of characters all in the audience. So are people coming from the multiverse to uh, like? No, it's because the movie is all theme and metaphor. Ah. I see. <laughs> but like, if you try to treat it as an in-universe story, oh, my condolences, friends. <laughs> this is an all theme book it just... where everything represents something. <laughs> I hope you're okay with that. I, I hope you've read books. <laughs> yeah, like, I hope you're okay with just having to intuit what this chapter of this story is trying to say. Absolutely it's, not. Yeah, it's, it, it is a no. cool book. Uh, written by Neil Gaiman. Uh, right? Love right, that guy. Right? Good writer. Good writer. <clears throat> uh, did I read this? Tears run down his face. A conflict about how he should feel, but just knowing that he misses her, that he loved her, loves her, and that he hopes she's okay wherever she is. The third person squeezes his paw reassuringly. Cameron squeezes back, and he's comforted by the feeling that for this moment he's sealed off from Brian and the town, and it's just hit excuse me, him and his mom walking through these mines. She tells him she's proud of him for graduating high school and college, and she's happy he found Devin. Would she really be proud of him if she knew what what he studied? Probably not. Probably not. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Sorry, bro. The arts. <sighs> Your parents don't love you if you studied the arts. <laughs> <laughs> That's just how it works. <laughs> Sorry. Why didn't you go for a real major cam? <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Uh, if she was still around. I would have majored in business administration or something. What did you major in? 
Smile. <laughs> Come on, every pony. <laughs> you just hey, gotta hey, smile. <laughs> hey. That song fucking goes so hard. That song goes hard as shit, dude. Does it? It does. It, it is. Does. It does. I like it. So good. It's very good. A gentle voice from behind him, uh, barely audible and carried on the soft breeze that grows weaker the deeper they go into these tunnels. Uh, music theory. What the hell are you supposed to do with that? <laughs> Even Brian You know, knows. so true. <laughs> you know. Even Brian knows. I'm glad that's not what I went for in school. <laughs> I'll just learn it recreationally like Rec I did. Hey, I understand. I understand enough to like read. Uh, I could sight read something, right? And that's what's important. That's what you study theory for. Yeah. You look yeah. at a piece of paper and you're like, oh, so that's how that sounds. Yeah. Cool. Right. And then I'm done. <laughs> that's all it's for. I think like uh, when I sight read stuff, I think I got like the second best rank you could get at that's the competition. Awesome. So oh, like yeah. it was okay. <laughs> just I'm just okay. Yeah. <laughs> But, like, you didn't have to go get a degree for it, you know? <laughs> no, I just had to stay in those classes for seven years. True. And not get a degree in it. And not get it. a degree in it, you know? <laughs> Oops. It's like, oh, no, I was only in concert band for seven years, and everyone's like, oh, so you didn't actually. <laughs> so you didn't actually. <laughs> you didn't yeah. actually learn anything, and I'm like, damn it. <laughs> They're right. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Look, no one, no one treats your high school experience as if it were it's worth no. a damn. You know? What, 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 what sub level do we have to get to hear you play the saxophone again? <clears throat> uh, teach <laughs> uh, the automatic uh, answer, the one that he had prepared for all of his skeptical friends uh, who were going into STEM-related fields. You a teacher? No, but that was my plan. Some plan. Oh. <laughs> Legend. I, I mean, I didn't go into debt, so I had financial freedom after I graduated. You know, you're pretty coherent for someone that's on that many shrooms. Most people would lose their minds. Oh, I am. I definitely am. It's a... I don't know. I have more control than I did the first time I tried it. In fact, Cameron feels like he's losing his mind right now, laughing even though it, it makes every part of his body ache. Xanax is like magic when you're panicking. Anyway, what is that you do for a living? Did it all pay off? Judging by the tone in Brian's voice, he already knows the answer to that. Amazing. Uh, customer service for, uh, Hulluan? Sad. Working for a country that we knew twice. Back in the 80s, we used to beat people up for working for companies like that. Cameron is at a loss for words, but only for a moment. Oh, uh, okay. Halloween, uh, the current market leader in smartphone manufacturing, is Tai... Taiwanese. Uh, and the uh, coyote assumes uh, that the bear is thinking of a certain other country in the same region. Either way, it's a strange and disturbing aside. But that's just Brian, and sometimes with Brian, it's best for Cameron to just keep his mouth shut and also keep smiling. So why music? You sing? Cameron wishes the bear would stop asking him questions, <laughs> making small talk with, <laughs> uh, like any of this, is a routine part of their lives. But the coyote assumes both salts, uh, assumes bath salts will make anyone talkative. Uh, kind of. What do you mean, kind of? Either you sing or you don't. Oh, that's that's a little true, though. I guess so. It's a little true. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I, I sing, but I'm not very good. I mean, you fucking better be if you spent four years learning. How about you sing and I'll decide? Oh, my God. <laughs> what a guy. We need we need Brian on one of those like uh, they're not reality shows, right? Like a, like a judging show, like yeah, American Idol or yeah, X Factor. Like that. Imagine Brian, Brian on there. X Factor. Let's go. Right. <laughs> That'd be kind of sick. Put him on. What was one of them? The Voice. Was the that Voice. One of them? The Voice is a good one. Okay. Are they good? Are their shows good? I mean, or are they they just seem like trashy TV to me. They're not trashy so much. I, they're for you know 
I never really found much merit in them. Okay, my my okay. family was really into American Idol when it started for the first few years. Mm-hmm. And sure, it helped jumpstart, like it helps people get careers. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but I was never really enamored with like musical. Yeah, one of the one of the winners was on Amer- not was on Phineas and Ferb, right? Who? Clay Aiken. Was was Clay Aiken an American Idol winner? Maybe not a winner, but I think he made it far. Maybe. I don't know. I don't remember. Far what, enough to get a career. Yeah. Something like that. Play. The only winners I remember, <laughs> the like, actually is, um, well, I remember David Cook was a winner. Uh, and I only remember David Cook was a winner because in the finals, he was going up against David Archuleta. And my mom really liked David Archuleta. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. But I don't remember any other one else. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's getting hard to keep up the uh, cheerful charade as Cameron senses the cruel, malicious arousal rising from inside of Brian again. The second dose is making him do more than just talk too much. Uh, sure, just gotta think of one to sing. Anything you want to hear? I know a lot of 90s grunge and alternative rock. <laughs> You're a walking, talking stereotype, aren't you? You write your own music? I definitely tried. A subtle twitch of annoyance ripples through the air. You know, one thing that really pisses me off is when someone's acting like an overly humble little bitch. Either you do or you don't. Either you're good at it or you're not. Either you offer something different or you fucking don't. Then Brian's kind of hot. You know, he's really like kind (laughs) of laying it out, isn't he? (laughs) Goddamn, bro. So which the fuck is it? I do. I I can. Uh, just uh, just give me a second. Man, you know that Cameron knows the rock variants of all of the MLP songs. He was in that. He's in that demographic. <laughs> yeah, that's he he true. knows like the Euro pop version. The Euro pop <laughs> of winter wrap up. <laughs> That'd go hard though. <laughs> No. Yeah. Uh, the corners of Cameron's muzzle turned down slightly, his composure almost crumbling. He's doing the best he can under the current circumstances, but he needs to help. He needs help. Devin, oh, where are you? Brian's attitude shifts from one extreme to the next, making Cameron feel a sort of emotional whiplash, but as long as it keeps him from getting hit, or more importantly killed, then he's fine with that. Tentatively, Cameron starts to sing, choosing the song that got him the most attention. The one that was played in moderate rotation at um, Mountain West College, all along with a few in the Northwest. A song about his ex, Dylan, uh, about their mutual love and hate for each other, and the abuse they used to hurl at each other, physical and mentally, and finally, about their breakup. His voice is rough and cracked, and... And while some of it is because he isn't warmed up, it's mostly due to having his throat crushed. True. Dehydration and screaming doesn't help either. But aside from a jolting each time uh, Brian pulls him in a different direction, Cameron finds the melody and rhythm. As he does, he becomes a bit more bold, singing louder until his voice carries through the tunnels. It feels very strange with the swelling muzzle and missing tooth. Brian still says nothing, and Cameron realizes he's listening intently. While this makes the coyote nervous, he knows it's better than the bear being angry, and mainly, he just needs to keep singing. Devin is in the mines with them, and he needs direction. Cameron just wishes he doesn't feel like he's leading Devin to his own demise. Oh, well, That's one way to kind of handle the situation. Yeah, I respect yeah. it. it. It is. It is. It is. Okay. Okay. I think we'll end the part here. Okay. So we'll see you guys around. <laughs>